I hope everybody's having a good night. Um, my name is Zania, and I am a media education specialist over at SPNN. And I also help out and uh, hello and run the um, NAF program, New England Fellows, and the uh, Fresh Vantage post production grant. Hi. Um, so, yeah, tonight it's just going to supposed to be time for us to informally talk about the grant program and the application process and then make space for any questions you all have. Um, for those who aren't here now, I'll be posting this afterwards so people can see it and ask me questions too through email. Um, so the outline tonight, we'll go through a brief SPNN intro. We'll do a program overview, go through eligibility, um, requirements, the application questions, and then leave space for you all to ask me some questions. Um, and yeah, we'll go to the next one. So St. Paul Neighborhood Network, the stories we see in mass media impact the beliefs and ideas and values that shape the way our world operates. Our mission is to empower people to use media and communications to make better lives, use authentic voice and build common understanding. The program is funded by Jerome and uh, the National Endowment of the Arts. And then it is uh, facilitated by SPNN. And the next slide. So just to give you a brief overview of uh, the, the staff over at SPNN, um, we currently have a new executive director. His name is Javier um, and then Bonnie Schumacher. And if, for folks who have been through this space, you've probably seen Bonnie. She's been at SPNN for a while. Um, and then our CTEP AmeriCorps program is ran by Allison and Tom, and uh, they're both newer to the team. So if you have if you haven't been around lately, then you probably haven't seen their faces, but they're around in the space too. And then the production team is Bianca, Tajeen, and Steve. So if anybody's ever been to the studio or done or seen like any of the um, programs that we cover and put on our channels that we have at SPNN. It was probably filmed by our production team. They're very cool and they're always doing a lot of stuff. Um, and the next one, and then we have our media education team. Um, there's myself, Tang, Mai, Majda, and Regina. Regina and Majda are our two new interns through AmeriCorps. Um, Mai does youth programming. Tang does our entry-level documentary programs as well as access. So he does docu and our spotlight series. And then I do Fresh Vantage, New Angle, and I also work access. Um, and for those who don't know, at SPNN, um, we have access hours where, where we're available to the community to come in and you know, offer up support in that way. Um, and that'll also be a resource to folks who are, who are in the program as well, who get selected. Fellowship that supports underrepresented and emerging documentary filmmakers, the cohort, will consist of six members um, and we'll move through together and we meet twice a which our goal is to meet twice a month. Um, and the stipend this year is $3,500. And uh, the model we've been the model we've been trying out lately is that we provide the stipend in chunks as we meet benchmarks along the way. Um, however, it's not meant to be extremely restrictive. It's supposed to be a gentle, like supportive accountability tool. Um, but as people need funds for any reason and they need to request them earlier than like the benchmarks that we create together, they can get the money. So it's not really like we're holding it or you can't access it if you need it for production reasons. Um, so that's, that's something that we've been trying out that worked out really good last year, just for folks to kind of like keep moving on a project because it can be very difficult. Um, and so for eligibility, uh, you have to be a resident of the Twin Cities metro area throughout the, dur the, the, the duration of the fellowship. Um, you have to be at one of the marginalized, one of the marginalized identities, whether that's BIPOC, LGBTQ, um, women or non-binary and disabled folks. And then it had to be at least 18 years of age by the time the program starts. And then we are not allowed due to our funding sources for folks to be in school while they're in the, the program. So you can't be enrolled in an educational program from fall 2023 to spring 2024. Um, and then you have to be an emerging filmmaker. 
And what is an emerging filmmaker? Artists who have an ongoing commitment to working in the media production rather than engaging in it as a hobby, pastime, or occasional pursuit. Artists who at the time of application have generated, completed, and publicly presented published documentary work. Artists whose primary goal is to generate new documentary series as opposed to remounting or reinterpreting existing work. Artists who are in the early stages of their creative development. Artists who have focus, direction, and goals, even while still developing their artistic voice. And then artists who have who have to be substantially celebrated within their field, uh, funding circles, and on the and the public at large. So with that, I think the emerging filmmaker category is uh, kind of shaped between the funders and SPNN. However, we do push people. So even if you have questions on whether or not you're emerging, to either reach out and ask us questions or still apply. Because um, there is a lot of flexibility in what emerging is. And like, we love hearing from folks who are like, I feel like I fit this category for these reasons. So we're very open to that conversation. Um, yeah. Anybody, anybody have any questions about the emerging part? We feel good about that. Cool. Let's do... There we go, requirements. So throughout the seven months of the program, um, like I mentioned earlier, we do the two, uh, monthly meetings and it, we meet as a cohort, the six of us. And typically cur currently it's been happening in the evening and we have dinner and we have that time dedicated that those three hours um, dedicated to helping out with projects, check-ins, and then providing other skills with, through like either visiting artists or lessons that I prepare on either grant writing, story construction, things like that to help the project and help people develop uh, a little bit more in-depth skills are around their documentary and storytelling. Um, and then we also do one-on-one -on -one check ins And I think that's a time for folks in the cohort to ask me specific questions and kind of just talk through where they're at. And sometimes we don't always have all the time in our uh, group sessions for that. So I do like to provide space for folks to kind of check in and express if they need more um, and kind of think through plans. Um, and then in the past, even though we do not require people to work on each other's projects, because you're in a cohort of people who are also doing similar things to you, you sometimes link up and like, if you need help filming or if you need help with sound or you need help with source and people can typically lean on each other to like help each other out in that way and build those relationships. And that's one of the reasons why SPNN and I personally love cohort structures because I feel like filmmaking can sometimes feel very isolated and you don't feel like you know many people and you can be kind of alone. So it's nice to do it around people who are also doing it, who are also doing it and are interested in as passionate as you. Um, and then for the end result of the program, we do require a three to 10 minute work in progress. And now this can vary. Um, there are a few different options. Some people come through the program with the intention of getting into film festivals and then they need teasers and smaller chunks of their content to like put in their applications. That serves as a work in progress. Some people don't need that and are working on a complete piece for whatever reason. And as long as you just show a snippet of that, the three to 10 minutes and it fits in that ratio, that suffices as well. Um, I think the three to 10 minutes and like the work in progress that you show is really established and determined between myself and the participant because I think it's you people have their own unique reasons for going through the program and what they're looking to get out of it. And we want it to be as useful as possible. So I don't really want it to be a thing where you're just like putting together some things so that you can show it, but rather putting it together. So when you leave the program, you're in a really good space to either apply for something, get into a film festival, get into an, another film lab, um, or kind of do whatever you want to do with your film. Um, and then because we are an access, a public access station, we do um, require that people allow us to show their films on our channels. But with that being said, that's also really flexible in terms of timing, because like a lot of grants, a lot of film festivals require you to have not shown it anywhere else and things like that. So we do like work in progress screenings and are very flexible with meeting the requirements of like other funding sources that you may have and things like that. So that's very negotiable and like it just needs a conversation. Cool. 
me see. I think it's coming. My computer is moving very slowly today. Sorry. There we go. Um, so the application questions. Um, the first question is, who are you as a filmmaker or media artist? And why do you do this work? What is your experience with video slash film production? Where are you now in your media career? What are your long-term goals for your media career? And please list any recognition you have received for your work, if any. Um, and please share with us a list of media pieces you have produced. Um, and I think within these questions, we're really trying to just get at why people are doing the work and like what drives them because needing a why is very important. So when you come in with a project idea that you're already passionate about and have connections to, it makes it easier for myself to support you and just kind of like help you along the way. Um, documentary can be a very long process. And so it's like, if there isn't very clear goals or intentions, it can be very hard to get through the program and feel like you're getting something out of it. And you're not just like wasting your time. Um, and I also, and I often, I often structure the support and the other things we bring in like visiting artists and the lessons that we go through to meet the needs that people have expressed that they're looking for. So if you are looking to work on fellowship applications and we're working on those, if you really want a space for peer review and have people give you feedback on your work, then that means you have to have work to get feedback on. Um, and so that's off to certain things from the cohort and the experience. But if you're not kind of staying on top of things and you don't really have things solidified by the time we get into our seven months, it's hard to really get the full value of the program um, and really take advantage of the support. Uh, also, I think I don't think I mentioned with uh, New Angle Fellows, you get a two year membership to SPNN um, where you get to do you get access to the equipment, our studio spaces, our classrooms um, and in our classes. So, yeah. Questions, oh, a couple other questions. How do you how would a documentary fellowship benefit you? What phase are you in for your film? Please describe the documentary you would like to work on and what's your relationship you already have. And then how would you spend your stipend? Um, I think the, and I kind of already touched on this, but the what is your relationship to the people that you're trying to document is a very important question. Um, and it's something really important to like kind of have thought through. Um, a lot of people work on documentaries for years and years. And so to say that you're gonna complete one in seven months from a brand new relationship that you don't like starting a brand new relationship with somebody can be very hard to establish that comfortability with your subject early on and then hit the ground running and be ready to film and shoot things. So just kind of thinking through like, what's your access to the topic or the people that you're interested in documenting um, and like what's that relationship like and how easy is that connection? Um, Cause I've had a lot of people who come into the program uh, and haven't necessarily started that relationship building yet and they don't really get to do anything until like five months into the program and so it's like having some of those initial things already in place really help you get the full benefit and then perfect so I'm a person who doesn't I don't like to talk too much so I can definitely go back to things and clarify things. And I just wanna leave a lot of space for any questions people have. Um, yeah, can you talk more about like um, how long the fellowship program is and like what like the start and dates are? Yeah, so the program will run from November until June. Um, we start in November and we tend to notify people very quickly after that the application process starts. Um, and then we have our final screening the first weekend in June. So we have a seven month period together. Um, early on, we kind of do a lot of team building, uh, not, not team building, sorry, developmental skills with like getting picture quality, storytelling quality, and kind of working through some of those things. And by the end, we try to bring in people to help give feedback and review the pieces that uh, folks are working on. Um, yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Um, I, I am an animator uh, in the past and I have been fascinated by the possibility that animation can can do with documentary because a lot of the stories that can only be 
told by mouth and it cannot be shoot um, you know lively. So that's why I'm I'm thinking of working on my animation to uh, to just like reanimate the the live stories that I want to capture. Um, so I want to know if, if there's any animation artists in the past that have joined the program or there if there's any support um, to, towards this direction. Um, so in the past, we haven't had people explicitly do animation as like the main content of their piece. However, we have had people incorporate animation into regular captured regular captured moving image, so like interviews and B-roll that they've shot. Um, however, uh, in terms of support, so I haven't had to, as a facilitator of the program, I've been doing it for about three years now. That hasn't been an area of support that I've had to give in the past. Um, however, like that's one of the things with negotiating and talking through the program where we can help build something that feels like it's supporting you in the work that you're doing and the work that you're trying to doing the work that you're trying to do so if you are interested depending on where you are in your animation skills and like needing support in that way we can help find those um but yeah i know last year and i think depending on who applies we often get the freedom to customize the cohorts like last year a lot of the folks who came through none of them were experienced documentary makers. However, they were all artists who had experienced storytelling. And so documentary was a new tool that they were using to storytell. Um, and so I think the emerging part is flexible. And then the storytelling, like, like the way we storytell, we love to get creative with that and like support creativity within documentary. Um, so I think it's really cool that you're, and I'm, I'm curious, would the animations be off of like, live interviews you've done? Um, I would be interested to um, to animate according to a script, though I haven't done live um, in interviews just yet um, because it's quite difficult to um, start, like merge this two medium together. I, I used to do like short animation that based on like video uh, interviews, um, but like maybe for the next project, I, you know, I, I will incorporate incorporate more live footages if possible. But I don't know. Like mostly, I have done like just voice interviews. Got you. Okay. Um, yeah, for sure. And I think it's also something if you wanted to talk through your ideas more, you can shoot me an email and we can kind of talk through more and see kind of how you're answering some of the application questions. Um, but for sure, it sounds really interesting. I think. Um, SPNN has the freedom to really help and be creative with how we support you and what and what fits into the category of documentary because I think it's not. It's like documentary can get a little boring if people aren't creative um, with how they tell with, with how they story tell. So we really want to encourage that. Thank you very much. That's that's all for me. Any other questions? Thank you. Oh yeah, uh, I was wondering too. Like, can you talk more about what scanning is and like what kind of like what happens there? I, I think I heard some of it, but uh, I've never been to scanning. I've seen it, but I'm not sure. I've never been inside. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So. SPNN is a media access center and we have cable channels. Um, we have been at the location that we're at at the Vendetta Towers for about, I think, five or so years, maybe a little longer. Um, but the, the space has a studio in it. Um, so kind of like, it, my how I would describe it is like if you ever watch PBS and like there are those um, cable access uh, sit down conversations and programming that happen on those channels that's very similar to what we do and so people can come in and use the studio we have shows like disability viewpoints we hold um, forms that are filmed for 
like candidate and, and, and like politics or for officials to come on and like say their points and things like that and be in dialogue with community. Um, and we also film like festivals and stuff in the cities and things like that that show on our channels. I think we have four channels in total. Um, and it, it's a space for us to get media out to community, but also people who produce work can put that on put that on our channels as well. So we can hold your hold your work on either one of our four channels, we have art channel and education channel, political channel, um, that constantly runs programming. Um, outside of so we offer that. We're also um, as a part of the cable access and like the access center, we provide um, computers access to to the Adobe suite that then support our advanced documentary programs. So for New England Fellows, we have an FX7, an, no, I'm sorry, an FS7, an FX3, and an A7 III are some of the uh, cinema cameras that we have available to use. Um, and then for some of our entry-level folks, we have uh, capturing like news and things like that. And we also have some light kits, some audio equipment, and all of this is, is included for rental or checkout when you are a part of the program. So that, that's another way that we support people coming through SPN and in our documentary programs is offering access to equipment and Adobe suites and things like that um, to get you as far along into your piece as we possibly can. Can you talk a bit more about how the program has changed over time? Yeah, um, so I feel like earlier on the program was geared towards people completing a full documentary. So we were asking folks, a lot, a lot of people were pushing for like a 40-ish or feature length film documentary, which was really unrealistic for the time frame. So one of the biggest things that has changed is the requirement for what needs to happen at the end. Um, and so we've added way more flexibility to like, it being a three to 10 minute work sample or teaser or video or something like that so that people don't in seven months because it's not realistic. And also the 3,500 is not by any standard enough money to produce a full documentary. So our new arc are kind of more spec funds and getting access to more spaces that can get them more funds and more development for their work. Um, and I think a more sustainable practice for documentary making is kind of working through the cycles of developing your piece, having a pitch, pitching it to places to get more funding or getting into film labs that get you more access to things, screening it in places and kind of building up momentum. And we want to be a part of that. Um, so it doesn't feel unsustainable and like you're working for no money. You're not able to pay anybody for the work that's happening. Um, so yeah, I would say that's one of the biggest shifts that's happened over the past couple of years. Cool, cool, cool. Great question, Alex. <laughs> um okay cool so yeah i'm so glad y'all hopped on tonight i hope some of the information was useful um and i look forward to seeing your applications